Okay, okay uh, five minutes. Uh, okay, hi, thank you for having me here. My name is Zion. Uh, today I'll be sharing uh, my personal experience on converting dynamic page sites to static pages. So, supposing if I were to list all the events for this meetup, let's say there are 1,000 events, so I will have 1,000 static pages. And if I want to, let's say one day I'll change the color of the word venue to red color, so I have to change 1,000 files. The other way of doing it is I have one file, one dynamic page file, event.php, and I'll just pass in IDs. The typical PHP code will look like this. I'll connect to a database. Uh, I have a SQL query, and I'll just output the HTML. Primitive, but it works. So the story goes that uh, in my previous company, when I joined, uh, I introduced a Zen framework for web development. Uh, the sites that was done by the many developers First, before me, were coding in plain PHP HTML. So the primitive code that I mentioned just now, yes, that was all the legacy code that I inherited. So one day, one fine day, the manager, who was also the sysadmin, he said, I want to delete all the past year databases. So uh, all the websites that were not done by you, that were, not, that were in plain PHP, I want to convert to static. So uh, first thought is, why reinvent the wheel? Let me try out some tools that are out there. Uh, but it couldn't really meet my requirements, so I had to write my own script. Uh, why? First reason, downwards traversal. Supposing, let's say, if I were to go example.com uh, slash event 98, uh, the tool will actually eventually go up to event 97 and will crawl 99, 2000, and eventually the whole of example.com, which I don't want. I only want those web pages under event 98. Next one is, uh, I, want to, I do not want to save the images, CSS, or JavaScript. I only want to generate the static web pages. And lastly, uh, because of all the legacy code, sometimes there were some unusual links, like the developer may have used some Ajax links. You click on this, find a picture, and you go to another website. So uh, I will have some code review on, on this uh, code that I wrote. I'm not going to go through uh, line by line, obviously. Uh, just some, bring out some things that are of concern. This, uh, let me see. Uh. OK. Um, so I have a function to actually add a, add a link type. And uh, I actually go by tag. So what are the links that are in the HTML document? Normally the A tag, area tag, iframe tag, script tag. For A tag, normally I'll get the href attribute. Fine. Uh, let's see if I go to the script tag. Script tag, there's no attribute. I'll just, I'll just get the whole contents. And uh, after that, I'll just use a regular expression to uh, extract out certain URLs like location.href. OK, now let me go on to the uh, main function, which is the invoke. Uh, basically, I use a queue. Every time I come across a link, I'll check. Uh, is it a downward link? Is it? Example, uh, event ID slash test.php. Yes, it's a downward link. I'll proceed. If not, I'll skip. After that, I'll use curl to uh, extract the web page. And this is the important part, DOM document. Uh, I actually learned that uh, you're not supposed to use regular expression to pass an HTML document. For example, if I come up with a regular expression to actually find all the A tags in the, in the document, it will break. Why? The A tag could be in. Uh, two lines, or the href attribute could be using single quote, double quote, or uh, in the legacy code that uh, inherited, no quotes. They didn't use quote at all. <laughs> so sometimes there are spaces and there are sometimes uh, spelling errors. So you have no idea. Whatever you can write, you will break. So just use the PHP native uh, DOM document. Uh, over here, I will just go through all the register link types. I find, I get all the DOM elements by tag name. Then I go through the attribute. So if there's an attribute, let's say like href for source, I will just uh, get the whole value, and then I store it, and I put it into the queue. If not, if it's like a script tag, I will basically get the contents, I'll apply the regex or something to find the relevant URLs. And finally, I will rename it. When I run the code, I will basically, you also return me uh, something like this. This, uh, the left-hand side, the keys of the array is basically those web pages that I have saved. Those are inside the array, the, the values are the links that I have found. And finally, the web pages should be saved like this. So instead of one page and 1,000 IDs, I have now 1,000 static web pages that are generated. And they'll be renamed like this, event underscore id-1.1. 
PHP. Uh, of course, there's yeah, and that's all. Thank you very much. Any questions? What framework are you using for your slide? Uh, Reveal.js. Reveal.js. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, it's quite cool. Uh, I'll just uh, coding HTML. No one asked me why I use. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So basically, it is just an HTML file, and I just include the uh, review.js, and this is just uh, this is just it. Each slide is basically uh, just one section. So. Uh, some computers have PowerPoint, some computers have uh, KeyPoint, uh, no, Keynote, uh, but every computer always have a text editor and a browser. So this will work everywhere. One more question. I'm just really curious about why your sysadmin wanted to convert a dynamic script uh, into uh, static HTML. Very cool question. Uh, you both want it the other way around, right? Yes, go ahead. Uh, he was uh, quite uh, uptight on security. Uh, in fact, actually, he ran our web servers in the office. Uh, we have, as developers, we have no access to the command line. We cannot install any software. So talk about Composer, Git, you can forget about it. Uh, so his idea was he want, he want to reduce the uh, attack area. So the longer that you keep all those uh, parser database and dynamic pages, right, someone could just inject the SQL injection. And many of our legacy websites, right, all the way from 97, right, they were actually kind of vulnerable to that because it's just primitive code and sometimes they don't do any they don't even do escaping sometimes. Uh, but when I started using framework, the framework does kind of does it all for you. La. So that was one of his uh, reasons uh, for security reasons. I have a speaker in the group called Kai Henry who gave up the solution, I think a year or two back. He actually prefers to produce everything into static pages. Simply because perform, I mean, from a server standpoint perspective, hosting static stuff is so much more scalable, uh, and especially now with S3 being able to map to a domain or whatever, you can scale it infinitely without having to do anything. So if you can convert whatever that is you're producing into static pages and product, then it makes your scaling problems almost disappear. Almost. Yeah, right. Sorry? As long as you don't have input. Yeah, exactly. I mean, for certain kind of things you can do it, not for everything. Yeah. If you're hosting blogs, you're hosting content, things like that, you can do it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you.